Hello and welcome. My name is Amanda Peregrine and I'm a family nurse practitioner here at Palm Health. Thank you so much for joining me for today's webinar on tips for being an empowered patient. Today, we are gonna talk about what it means to be empowered in your health, why it matters, and specific ways that you can empower yourself throughout your healthcare journey to achieve well-being. What do you think it means to be an empowered patient? Patient empowerment depends on a number of different factors. To feel empowered, patients need to have a knowledge of their health and conditions and treatments. They need positive interactions with health professionals, confidence navigating the health system, feeling heard and respected, participating in decision-making, setting realistic goals, and ultimately feeling comfortable to take action. 50% of adults have at least one chronic health condition, 25% have two or more, and ultimately chronic disease accounts for 86% of all healthcare costs. You may have come to Palm with one or more chronic diagnoses, but have never really considered how many factors play into that disease process. Disease is very complex, and often the root cause is multifactorial. One condition has many different causes, and likewise, one cause may result in many different conditions. Functional medicine treatment targets the specific manifestations of disease in each, each individual. It requires a detailed understanding of each patient's genetic, biochemical, and lifestyle factors and uses that information to develop personalized treatment plans to improve patient outcomes. You may be saying, great, that sounds awesome, let's do it, but really don't know what all it entails. Do you understand how functional medicine differs from traditional medicine? What is expected of you? How do you prepare? And how can you be an active participant in your care? Functional medicine takes a deeper dive into root cause of illness rather than just symptom management. It's about personalizing your care, examining your history, your physiology, your genetic makeup, and your lifestyle. And then it gives consideration to the mind, body, and spirit while taking into account external factors such as physical and social environment. An initial visit, and here's what to expect. An initial functional medicine appointment is likely gonna be different than any doctor's appointment you've ever had. Your appointment is 75 minutes and involves discussing your goals. You may get questions you've never had before. When were you last well? If you could erase three problems with a magic wand, what would they be? What do you think caused or might be contributing to your illness? What are you the most fearful about regarding your health? We understand and use tools such as the functional medicine timeline and matrix to gain a better understanding of your case and ultimately may make preliminary recommendations at the end of this visit. This is a functional medicine timeline and can be helpful in identifying root cause by examining antecedents, triggers, and mediators. The idea is to look and say what life events occurred just before or around the onset of your illness. Antecedents are factors that predispose you to an illness or pattern, such as genetics, experiences, past illnesses, occupational exposures, nutrition, and lifestyle. Triggers are factors that provoke the signs and symptoms of illness, such as trauma, stress, surgery, infection, radiation, and toxins. And then mediators are factors that contribute to pathological changes and dysfunctional responses, such as poor sleep, ongoing stress, and ongoing exposures to toxins such as mold. The functional medicine matrix is about putting the big picture together. How are each of your body systems working and communicating with one another? If we take a step back, what is the big picture? The matrix itself may look complex, but once completed, it gives a seemingly straightforward snapshot of someone's life. With that said, I think most of us never take a step back to think about all the things that could be contributing to how we're feeling. The functional medicine model is an individualized, 
patient-centered, science-based approach that empowers patients and practitioners to work together to address the underlying cause of disease and promote optimal wellness. How do I prepare prior to my visit? It's very helpful for patients to request records, labs, consult notes, histories from previous providers when they come into an initial appointment but it very frequently isn't done prior to an initial appointment. If you need any assistance, we are able to have you sign a consent for disclosure and we can request those records, um, but those can take some time. We also ask that you set up your patient portal. That often, again, is not usually completed prior to an initial appointment, but is helpful because we'll often talk about it during your initial visit. A patient portal is an online way to be able to view lab results, communicate with your physician or nursing staff and ask any questions that you have. And then we also ask that you complete Freesia intake paperwork and that your navigator will help give you instructions on how to do that. That intake paperwork includes a readiness questionnaire, um, which is essential for really kind of reflecting on your readiness and ability to be successful with this process. Self-reflection is an extraordinarily important part of being an empowered patient. How did I get here? Why has nothing else worked? Am I ready for change? And is that change actually practical for me? Readiness for change is a process. There are stages of change that you can see here. When we first start, we're in pre-contemplation where we really don't intend on changing anything at all. Contemplation, we know there's a problem, but we're not committed to change. Preparation is intending to take action. Action is actually executing the plan to modify our behavior. Maintenance would be sustaining it. And then we have the path of, do we go to relapse and return to our old ways or termination and not attempt to return to old ways? Where do you see yourself in stages of change? And even more importantly, how do you align that with your provider? I think socially, even from the time that we're toddlers, we tend to try to please and avoid confrontation. As an example, statistically speaking, when patients are asked how many glasses of wine they have per week, on average, I'd say they underestimate by about half. Why is that? I think we often do this without even thinking. We wanna please, we want to do well. We know we aren't making the best choices, but we either aren't ready to change or we aren't being honest with ourselves on where we need to change. But realistically, that behavior keeps us in the same dysfunctional patterns and doesn't allow us to make the improvements that we want. When we as providers ask questions about diet and lifestyle choices, we do so to understand you as an individual and how we can help you achieve your goals. It's extremely important to be honest with both yourself and your provider regarding where you're at so we can tailor a plan that's realistic for you. To gain a better understanding of your specific readiness and as a part of your initial patient paperwork, we have you complete a questionnaire that has you rank the following items from very willing to not willing at all. Are you ready to significantly modify your diet? Take several nutritional supplements each day, keep a record of everything you've eaten, modify your lifestyle, sleep habits, work demands, practice relaxation techniques or engage in regular exercise, or have periodic lab tests to assess progress. It's important to remember that these are not right or wrong answers. This is a way for us to understand how we can meet your needs and personalize your care. So far, we've discussed questions your provider may ask and questions you should be asking yourself, but what are some questions you should ask your provider? What home services are right for me? Is there anything else I should be doing? Are there other options? It's also incredibly important to verbalize if at any point you're feeling confused or overwhelmed. Your provider wants to answer your questions and go at a pace that is most appropriate for you. Achieving well being is not a sprint, it's a marathon. Did you hear part of the plan at the end of the visit and go, yeah, I won't be doing that? If so, speak up, tell us. Change can be uncomfortable and is necessary, but we also want to make sure that the plan is realistic and that you are part of the development. 
one of the most common questions we get after an initial appointment is what are the next steps? If you haven't already, we then want to get old records. We can help with that process or you can do it yourself. Also want to schedule and complete any labs that your provider may have suggested. Set up your portal communication if you haven't already so you can communicate with your provider and get scheduled for your extended visit, which is typically scheduled once your labs are back. Did we forget anything? Especially if you do not have a primary care doctor outside of Palm, we recommend a yearly APV appointment with one of the Palm Health Nurse Practitioners. An APV is an annual preventative visit. Our goal during that visit is to focus on items that you aren't typically able to focus on with your physician and make sure that we haven't missed any of those maintenance items. Preventative screenings such as a colonoscopy, pap smear, mammogram, DEXA scan, seeing your eye doctor, seeing your dentist. In conclusion, we very much want to enable patients to be empowered in their health care. However, empowerment is also dependent on patient engagement, involvement, and open communication. Our goal at Palm is for all of our members to be active participants in preventing chronic illness and achieving well-being through self-reflection, realistic goal setting, increased health literacy, and a collaborative relationship with your provider, we hope you feel empowered to take action in achieving your health goals and ultimately well-being. Thank you so much for joining me today.